Hi, you're listening to After the Review with Peter and Terrell. What it do, baby? Our podcast is available on YouTube, Spotify, Podbean, and now Apple Podcasts. So if you like Let's our, go. If you like our content, please share, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you all next week. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to After the Review with Peter and Terrell. I'm your host, Peter, and with me as always is my man, Terrell. How was your weekend, Terrell? Man, my weekend was good. It was back in the great state of Texas. Oh, yeah. Uh, got a little into the Texas State Fair, you know, got some fried stuff, uh, some fried brownies, and I got a little sweet too. So, but um, it was great. Saw a little high school football. You know, it was good to be back in Texas. High school football wasn't that great, but, um, you know, football's football. Watch a little football. But yeah. I had a good weekend. How about you, Pete? Uh, I was all right. I was busy working, so I couldn't come up and see you. I was a little bummed out about it. I know, I know. I'm going to have to make it back here in December or something. Uh, but yeah, I was bummed. I was no, I was told <laughs> that you were invited, but uh, you didn't get a chance to make it because you were working. So I never, I never um, get mad at people who are working. I always make that dollar. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the calendar's turned. The leaves are changing colors. Pumpkin smell is in the air, and that means October baseball. We got the playoffs starting on Tuesday, uh, and I'm excited for this. Uh, how are you feeling about it? Uh, I'm definitely excited for a little baseball, a little postseason. Uh, baseball to see what's going on um hopefully we'll get a i mean this year we'll get a different champion because the red sox are in it so yeah. i'm sad to see what's gonna happen thank god i'm nervous you know you know i'm a diehard yankees fan uh, i'm a little nervous i think we got a good shot to win it all this year but i don't know there's some scary teams out there the astros are great as always the a's really scare me as a wild card team um uh, not really too afraid of anybody in the national league but uh it'll be fun to see uh, hopefully the Dodgers don't make it again. Just I like to see a new team uh, in there. Dodgers will probably make it though. <laughs> now that you said that, <laughs> you know you're right. You're right. Uh, so first game in the is the NL wild card. We got the Brewers at the Nationals on Tuesday night. Who do you like in this game? I think it's going to be one of our games we picked this week. We're going to start out right away with that. Start off the picks right off oh, the back. Yeah. I like it. Just the baseball, uh, yeah. I'm gonna take the Brewers. Based off because they have Lorenzo, they have Lorenzo Kane. He's played for the Royals. The Royals <laughs> is my squad, so uh, I have skin in the game, as one would say. So I'm just gonna have to go with the Milwaukee Brewers because they have somewhat of an attachment to me. No, so, I'm going with the Nationals. They've been playing good baseball as of late. They're hot. They got Max Scherzer on the bump going for him. He's got two different color eyes. It's gonna distract the hitters. They would creep me the hell out if I was looking at what, that. Wait, what colors are his eyes? He's got a brown eye and a blue eye. Wow, you this, only really see that. Yeah, I know. Like it's dogs, a genetic right? disease. It's crazy. Oh, and it's really cool crazy. looking. But that's awesome. Yes, very, but he pulls lots very of intimidating. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, you're right. It has nothing to do with him being like a $100 million a year pitcher or he, whatever his contract is. He's was. actually probably married and we don't even know. So, he probably, so if he's married, I feel bad. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Rip. All right. <laughs> and then Wednesday night, we got the American League. We got the Tampa Bay Rays at the Oakland Athletics. I'm definitely going with the Athletics. Like I said, they scare me. They have a winning record against every team in the American League during the regular season. So they're not a team I want to see come second or third round of the playoffs. I'm taking a break. I'm taking the Rays. Uh, <laughs> Noah Friend, diehard Rays fan. Uh, she talks greatly about them, um, and they're like in like the little funk. So this is time they get a little bit of funk. You know, get on a roll, win this game, and get on a roll, make a little push in the playoffs. So I got the race. Yeah, uh, I like it. You're thinking with your heart and not your head. It's an advantage for me, as always. Always. <laughs> oh, whatever. Uh, but uh, then the National League uh, gets started on Thursday. We get the Cardinals at the Braves Thursday afternoon, and then the winner of that Brewers-Nationals game is going to the Dodgers. And then on Friday – We'll get the winner of the Rays Athletics ho playing at the Astros. And then Friday night, the boys in the Bronx, the Yankees, get to play on the Twins. Both those teams hit over 300 home runs this year. First time in MLB history any team's done that. So I'm expecting home runs galore, and it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it, sh it should be a good time. Uh, I'm excited to see that one, too. Um, you know, I like the Yankees. I don't hate them. Everyone, I feel like a lot of people hate, hate the Yankees or like the Yankees. Or, you know, I'm on that camp of liking the Yankees. So I appreciate I'm it. excited to see what ju Judge can do uh, for sure. And He's the man. So hopefully we take care of business and things work out okay. But uh, moving forward, interesting week in football, don't you think? Uh, yeah, like very 
a lot of sorry to me cut you no, off, but ahead. a lot of uh, a lot of things were shown this weekend that we saw. You know, maybe we thought the team wasn't as good or um, team was bad and it was actually pretty decent. So it was a, a lot to see this weekend. Yeah, just when we thought we knew things, everything gets turned on our head. It started on Saturday. It started on Saturday, really. With uh, Clemson getting pushed to the wire by North Carolina. Old Mac Brown still got it. And he went for the win, went for two, and didn't get it. And the Tigers survived. I'm sure Dabo appreciated that, keeping his season alive. For sure. Are, are you going for two there? Or are you are you kicking a field goal and hoping oh, over time uh, something happens? I'm Mac Brown. I'm at home. I'm a legendary coach. I'm out of retirement. I've already won a national championship. I'm going for two. I'm, we're winning okay. that game right there. So if you're going for two, you're going in a better play than the speed option. You're going, you got, you got to have. Like I feel like if you're going for two there, you got to have a two point play that you know is like, you know, this is this is it. Like this is my two point play. Like I didn't. I got multiple options. You know, backside sneaking, sneaking out, like something. You know, I feel like a speed option isn't isn't the one I'm going with. I didn't love the play call, but you know, maybe there was something there. He saw something. Uh, but Clemson's defense, you know, they showed, oh, right, one play. We're going to make a stop. We're so gap sound. There was, like, six guys on the ball. It was ridiculous. They were so prepared for it. I just kind of laughed. It was like, yeah, you think you, you know, maybe get one-on-one -on -one ISO on the outside. Nope. One, four white jerseys against one uh, powder blue. And that was it. Yeah, so I I didn't I, didn't, I like like the aggressiveness from Mac, but don't love the call. If you're going to be aggressive, come up with a great call. You know, I, I know he's got some of his, his bag of tricks, you know, so, so I feel like, you know, he's going to watch that film and be like, dang, really? Was that really the play I should have went? Uh, I agree, but Max, you know, it says a lot to your team that you trust your team to win that game in that spot. But 100%. Other, other interesting stuff in the NFL, the Sunday night game, New Orleans and Dallas, I picked Dallas to absolutely crush the Saints. I was high and mighty on them, and I, I should have learned. I just have the image of Stephen A. rolling in with the cowboy hat. How about them cowboys? Uh, the Saints got the win, 12-10, and the cowboys couldn't run the ball. It was really, really strange. And they said Dak, most cowboy fans said Dak didn't play well, but his numbers said otherwise. He was 22-33 at for 223 yards. Did throw that one pick, but over 10 yards of completion and 66% completion on the road. It's nothing to you know scoff at. Yeah, I don't I don't know what people are talking about. I was I was happy with that. I, I mean, you know, he tried to do his best. I thought I thought the telling sign was when I got the ball back like a minute fifty left. Like if Dak can go down here and get a field goal, I um, mean, this is this is shut up all the haters. And he didn't, but he showed me. You know, I, I was like I feel like the last couple of years Dak wouldn't have, you know even got him in that position close or you know make some of those throws. That throw to Randall Cobb was insane down the middle. He's like it was a bullet right on the money. And I was like, whoa, okay. Oh, oh. And um, <laughs> that the, you know there's things like that I seen been been improved. And it's not his fault that the running game can't get going. I know if you know the running game is going can't get going, and you're expecting to lean on your quarterback. But I mean, their their offense is built you know for you know to run the ball. And Amari Cooper's getting covered like a blanket over there by Marshawn Lattimore. So it, it was really tough for him. And like I. Don't, I still think that it was worth paying that. I don't think it's been a fluke. You know, he's played all these easy teams. I think, you know, Dak is Dak is for real, and Kellen Morris really helped him a lot. So I think, you know, take this with a grain of salt. The Saints are still a good team with or without Drew Brees. Um, I think they're just getting by right now. But I think the Cowboys are still good too. So yeah, they it should be fun to see down the road. Yes, they definitely got to do better. 18 carries for 35 yards for Zeke. You got to do better than that. I thought they should have ran the ball more. Even if you're not getting anything, just stick with it just to maybe create a little more space for Dak. But we'll see. It's not a bad loss. Tough place to play on the road. Uh, we'll see how they rebound next week. Big game against the Packers coming up at home for both teams. Uh, this will be a great back bounce back game for the uh, Cowboys for sure. You know, especially for Dak too for all the naysayers. Yeah. And then how about your boy Mahomes in Detroit? They were in a slug fest. It was ugly. It was nitty. It was gritty. Mahomes didn't throw for a touchdown. But as Andy Reid said it best, I think he said uh, not all of Picasso's paintings were masterpieces. Uh, and he got it done. You know, let him down the field. Down four, down four, got him the touchdown, and they took home the dub. You know, I, this is what I wanted to see from Mahomes, you know, like, you know, to get it done even though when the circumstances are against you or you're not having a good game. 
But it was still crazy, you know, even though his game's going that way it was, and he wasn't having a great game. When they got the ball at the end, I still had kind of like, I wasn't as nervous. You know, you're, you're yeah, still naturally nervous. nervous but yeah. you're like, he's going to get it done. You know, I, Mahomes is going to get it done. He's like, this is what he does. He's, you know, it's kind of hard to stop his offense, and he's going to get it done. And sure enough, he got it done. So when I saw Kelsey catch that ball and lateral it back to LaShawn McCoy to pick up an extra 20 or yards or so, I was like, this, this game's over. This team is breathing the life that Pat Mahomes just emits from himself. It's just something about him. It's the anti-Alex Smith. It's everything great that you want in a quarterback. And when I see the team doing plays like that in the crunch time of a game, I have no doubt that they're coming out on top. 100%. So defense did not look great at all. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what the problem was. Like, they did. Uh, this a lot of things. On honestly, they did have a hundred yard pass. touchdown, though. They did they, have a hundred yard touchdown. I mean, they did have a hundred yard touchdown. Yes, I'm sorry. They did have a hundred yard. But I like as we <laughs> I talked about this earlier. It's like Frank Clark, where are you at? <sighs> this Come on now, Chris Jones. The only one seems like getting pushed. Frank Clark, where are you at? Early in the year, so it's, I'm not going to judge too early. But if we get to week eight and we're still getting the same production, be highly upset. Hope we got some clauses in there and get some money back. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully they have clauses in there to get some money back. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to say we. Oh, yeah, you and your we. Now, I think I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here if you'll let let me. I'm going to have to talk about my Vikings. And go for it. This is what we all have been waiting for. I mean, I don't know where to start with this team. It's just so frustrating. They lost in Chicago as usual. Mitch Trubisky got injured on the first drive of the game, and we let Chase Daniels beat us. Everyone's talking, I can't defend Kirk Cousins anymore. There's something about him. The team hates him. Adam Thielen even came out and said, called him out like, we hate him. Thielen hates him. The players hate him. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Thielen came out and Yes, Thielen came out and bashed Kirk Cousins, basically. He said, you can't rely on your running back to run for 180 yards a game, even though we got the best running back in football. You got guys open deep. You just got to hit them, is what he said. Wow. I would expect no offense, Diggs, but I'd expect that from Diggs before I got it from Thielen. But, well, hey, that's a telltale sign that it's time to, you know, move on. I don't know. It's hard I, to make it, a change in mid-year, I, but, you know, something's I can't defend him. I think they need to bench him. Zimmer clearly hates him. Don't get me wrong. Zimmer's running an offense from 1976, and it infuriates me. His def- Nobody talks about his defense. It's so tough. They play so good. Chicago has scored three t- touchdowns on their first possession in their last 12 games. All three games are against the Minnesota Vikings. So that's got to say something there. You're getting completely outcoached to start the game. Teams are walking down the field scoring touchdowns on you. You're playing from behind. You know your quarterback has got happy feet in the pocket. You can't block for him. Uh, Diggs couldn't talk smack because he f- had a crucial fumble on a drive in a 7 nothing game that looked like we were driving down the field. We had the ball at about the 40, and he was breaking wide open on a slant, and he just got stripped from behind as usual. Zimmer said it was a point of emphasis in his team meeting on Saturday night that they're the best team of strip sack and in the league, you need to protect the ball. All they do is punch the ball out, and we refuse to do it. Uh, I was, I, I don't know where to go. I can't defend Kirk Cousins anymore. I want to blow it up. I, I, you know what? Honestly, I just want Teddy back. I just want my boy Teddy back. Okay, you All want right. Teddy Two Gloves back? I want Teddy uh, Two Gloves back. Uh, let's play a quick game. All right. Uh, would you would you rather have Kirk Cousins or Andy Dalton? Uh. I'm def. So if Kirk Cousins and Andy Dalton played in a primetime game with equal teams, would the game just end in a tie? Because, oh my God, Andy Dalton tonight made Kirk Cousins look good, honestly. I think I would take Cousins because eventually he might do something. Andy Dalton, I know, is not going to do anything. Kirk Cousins may do something. But okay. yeah, I'm go- I would go Cousins there, but it you're asking me to choose between. I, I don't know. <laughs> bad. Just okay. bad. Okay. Quick. Uh, quick. Uh, James Win- Oh, I'm definitely taking... I'm definitely taking Jameis. I'm risking... Jameis. Jameis has got balls. I, that's that's okay. all I got to say about it. He's got balls. Cool. Next one. Two more. Um, right. Mariota. Cause- no, I'm not taking Mariota. 
He's he's hurt. He's gonna be out if he gets hit. He's hurt. Okay, last one. Uh, Kobe Brissett or Cousins? Ah, uh, I think I'm taking Brissett. Uh, I'm TBD. I have to see more from Jacoby Brissett in big games because he hasn't, you know, really been in that situation yet in his career. And but he's perfect for my team. You know, he's not a he's a good game manager, makes throws when he needs to make throws, and lives behind a good defense in a run game. So, okay, my bonus one, Baker. I'm I'm taking I'm taking Baker. I hate uh, to say shake it. and bake. That's what I thought. No, he's a dick. I hate him, but I need somebody with you know balls. Like I said, Kirk Cousins has no balls. He is ballless, <laughs> and I need somebody with some you know some chutzpah out there for my team. Okay. But, uh, okay. Yes. All right. So speaking of those quarterbacks you named, we had a lot of letdowns from some good teams. We thought this week the Rams let down at Tampa uh, at home against Tampa Bay. Jameis had a big day. Bruce Arians led team really. You know, great bounce back after that loss to the Giants, which was heartbreaking. The Colts let down at home against the Raiders. That was surprising. And then the Falcons let down against the Titans. That was bad at home. And then the Ravens really kind of got exposed by the Browns. Uh, Let's talk about that game. The Browns found their uh, identity, I think. What about you? Yes, seems like Freddie Kitchen remembered how to call plays or something. I don't know. Nick Chubb probably built him out a little bit. Oh, Um, don't. Ooh. (laughs) <laughs> my boy Chubb, and you t- don't ever besmirch his ma- name ever again. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Browns' offense looks way better than it did the other night. I don't know if they had to come to Jesus Jesus meeting or what, because the Ravens' defense isn't you no know, slouches at all by any. But they look better. Baker looked better. Everything just looked better. So I think they, you know, whatever philosophy they went with, I think it's a little run heavy. Some play action stuff is what they should go with. Oh, uh, Ricky Steele Jones had a big day for Texas A&M. Still he, thought he was on the Cardinals. I figured that out in like week two. <laughs> two that he was on. Uh, but you know, I think uh, it was good what I saw. Wanted to see more consistency. But no, the Browns are right back in the driver's seat. They can win the AFC North. They're in first so, place. Yeah, you know, they're in first place. But everyone was like was talking about at the beginning of the year. So uh, it's crazy, crazy how things can change from uh, week to week. Uh, but. You know, I want to see two good weeks put together. Oh, a string of good weeks put together for them to really, really, really you know, get excited. But I love Baker. I love OBJ. And I love all the players that got on the team. So I'm going to be excited for the Browns. And, you know, I'm always going to be rooting for Baker. So big – I watched this game very closely. A lot of fantasy implications for me. And my dad had it on because he's got Lamar Jackson in his QB. So we were eyes glued to this game. The Ravens' defense was total letdown. They blew assignments left and right. They didn't look physical. I did love that the Browns went back to the run game, just nitty-gritty. The offensive line is built to run block, not really built to pass block. The defense looked really good. They're fine in their way. They were physical. They were fast. You know what? I'm starting to think OBJ doesn't fit in this team. He was too busy fighting with the Ravens' corners than getting open and catch balls. Seems like everybody else is about the team. He doesn't seem like he's about the team. Even Baker, as much as I hate him, he's definitely a team guy. They love him, and he's about the team. OBJ seems to, you know, he had those incidents in, in New York, and now he's having them in Cleveland. No, I, no, no. I'm not going to let you get on this OBJ rant. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I don't think that's a problem here. I think, uh, I feel like we would heard about it. That I think also it's week four, so let's not you know, take too much into it. I know he was fighting with the, the corners they hold a lot against him i, I really do i saw I, I saw it so i mean he was rightly so he is okay to be up so but let's hold off on that obj rant because you know how much i like obj so I'm, I'm not just gonna let you get that one off yet you no know, come week eight and he still hasn't scored a touchdown or oh he scored a touchdown um, but his stats still look the way they do uh and, they're winning football, that and if they're winning football games and he's getting frustrated because he's not getting the ball you'll let me get back on but a big game yeah but Coming up at the Niners. But he hasn't been getting frustrated without getting the ball. So I know, but he got, but he was getting the ball. You know, he got the ball against his jet against the Jets back in New York. But big game at the Niners Monday night. That'll be a real test. For sure. All right, let's talk about the other undefeated matchup that I was talking about: the Patriots. Dirty play outlast a really bad day from the Bills. I mean, that hit on Josh Allen. That was dirty. I'm just gonna say it. That should be a suspension. Uh, yeah, okay, so I've listened to a couple people talk about this. 
So Josh Allen's what, like six four, six five. He's big dude. He's running head, big dude, running head, full head of steam. Jonathan Joseph is probably what, under six foot, whatever. You know, at the point of contact, I think Josh Allen ducks his head, and at that point, I think John, Jonathan Joseph has already launched his body into you know trying to go to Josh Allen, and it just happened to be head to head. I don't think it was intentional to be dirty. But it is it is a bad hit. Like, yeah, it is helmet to helmet. It should have been flagged. Whatever. He's gonna get fined. No like for sure. But I don't think he meant to do that on purpose by any means. It just came out that way. And I know I was listening to Chris Long yeah. with Ron Rosillo's podcast. He's like, trying to get someone to tackle the belt line is really hard. Although you try to, but like someone come at full speed trying to get a first down and you you try to tackle them. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So I don't think he meant to do it. It's just the consequence of playing football, which is really scary. Yeah, so he was, I mean, I think there was another defender kind of wrapping him up a little bit. And he was his momentum was kind of slow. And he was, I, I see the argument there. But here's a crazy rule. I'm going to be a little out there on this one. I think if you knock out, if you injure an opposing team's quarterback on an illegal hit. So the the hit was flagged your quarterback shouldn't be allowed back in the game. So Tom Brady should have been benched to make things fair because they basically cheated to injure the quarterback. Not to say Josh Allen was having a good day before that, but just a little, you know, a little out there. I mean, we could talk about it. The Bills had three interceptions, a blocked punt for a touchdown, and they still had the ball with three minutes left, down six, and a chance to win the game. So I was really impressed with what they showed me overall, defensively for sure. Yeah, that defense is real. Uh, okay, I don't know if I love your theory on that. Maybe if you knock someone out illegally, you should be have to sit out the game too. Like if it comes back and they're out for a concussion, you have to be like, oh, like, oh you're ejected from the game. I just go like too. eye for an eye, like a quarterback versus some corner. Like there's a big difference. You know what I'm saying? True, true, but you can't. You can't justify. I don't know. You can't really just justify taking it, a healthy quarterback. I I, I can so say unfair. it was a little out there, but yeah. I mean, the Bills outgained the Patriots by 150 yards. They played well. If I had Josh Allen at the end of that game, I would have really liked to see what would have happened. But the Pats find a way. A little worried about Brady in that offense, but we'll see going forward where they go. Uh, the Thursday night game, the Eagles Packers. That was fun football, wasn't it? One hundred percent. Um, you know, Carson Wentz, you know, another quarterback MVP. I, I dearly love. MVP yeah. again. E- MVP already? MVP again. Back to his MVP self, I should say. Yeah, definitely back to his MVP self. Um, he's a dog. The Eagles team is very good. They still they always figure out how to do it. I feel like every year they have injuries, like um like a ton of injuries, and it's like this crazy amount of injuries. And like I don't really know. Honestly, I don't know who's playing the secondary for them other than Malcolm Jenkins. <laughs> yeah. It might and honestly, it might be me and you and our and our buddies. Like honestly, for sure. Like I have no clue who's playing back there. I don't know how they keep finding these guys. If anybody needs Jalen Ramsey right now, it's the Eagles. They will hundred percent need Jalen Ramsey. They need to trade their two, the first next two first round picks if they got them. They might not either trade them and go get Jalen Ramsey for sure. They need to do something and because Jalen Ramsey is definitely needed on that team. The cornerbacks can't stay healthy, and the ones that are up out there are not very good. And I honestly don't know how they pulled that game out with those cornerbacks on. Big game from Devontae Adams really helped me in fantasy, but uh, I loved it. Aaron Rodgers, back to him old, his old self, throwing for 400 yards, threw for a billion touchdowns, but they lost. See, Aaron, this is what happens. You need to let your defense play and not do everything. Cause you lost. Who cares that you looked great? You were you were three and zero doing nothing and letting the defense win games, but the defense got exposed a little bit. I don't think they're as good as everyone thought they were. They were just playing some bad quarterbacks, but it was nice to see the Eagles rebound. I was a little worried about them. It keeps things interesting in the NFC East, and the Packers fall back to the pack a little bit. <laughs> no pun intended. But uh, speaking of Jacksonville, how about Gardner Winshew? Those boys, they just keep winning. They keep winning with yeah. this man at QB. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, he's he's really exciting to watch, honestly. I, I kind of, like, tuned out. The Broncos got up yeah. early. Yeah. The 17-0, 17-3? Yeah, 17 nothing. I think it was 17 nothing. got up early. I was like, okay, this game's over. <laughs> you know, slowly going by. You know, as I, as always, I'm still going to watch it. I'm still going to keep an eye on these games. Got the Sunday ticket red zone going. So, you'll, you'll see the touchdowns here and there. 
you're like, uh oh, okay. And slowly they scored another touchdown. They scored another touchdown. And it's like, okay, this game's getting competitive. You know, you start watching, you see things Minchu's doing, you know, heard he dropped the ball and caught it and then picked through it for the completion. He's weaving in and out of people, throwing for touchdowns and Leonard Fournette's looking like Leonard Fournette back in LSU. That and doesn't this team is hurt. just rolling. Does not hurt. So this to is rush very for exciting. 225 yeah, for it, Fournette does not hurt. 100%. So. I'm just like, gosh, this is exciting. And Minshew is so, it's just so fun to watch. He's, so I'm excited for what this team's going to do. Uh, Joe Flacco, on the other hand, just did Joe Flacco do. Yeah, unfortunately, Flacco's done. Denver's done. Total rebuild. But uh, when he's so fun to watch, Gardner Minshew. He's got that Mike Leach, Washington State appeal, the mustache. It's just, maybe he's got powers in the mustache. He looks like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. They even took a picture of him and the actor together this week. I love it. I'm all on the Jacksonville bandwagon. It's not just Duval anymore. They're fun. You know, get rid of Jalen Ramsey, pick up some picks, and just go from there. But another rookie quarterback, Danny Dimes, kept delivering for the Giants, and they crushed Washington also. Yeah, Danny Dimes doing Danny Dimes things. Uh, didn't have a, as great of a game as he had the, uh, the coming out party. But, you know, still got the win. That's all that matters. Uh, I was playing against him at fantasy, so I was very happy with what he was doing on the field, which was not throwing touchdowns. He threw one, and that was it. Um, but, you know, he looked good. Um, they definitely have the, I think they have the quarterback for the future there. On the other hand, Dwayne Haskins, on the other end, they said he wasn't ready, and we definitely saw that he wasn't ready. He threw three interceptions, did not look great. I think this is a Jay Gruden's Hail Mary, did not get fired by week six. It's like, listen, yeah. I'm going to try this. <laughs> I'm going to try this rookie quarterback out and be like, yo, he's going to be my saving grace. And the, like, yeah, the reason why we're bad is because I have this rookie quarterback or he's going to, you know, but no, uh, it's not working out for Owner's him. knocking on the door. This is my guy. But I heard he. I heard Haskins wasn't even taking second team snaps for the team. He was running just scout team the entire time. So. Really didn't put him in a position to succeed. Hopefully, he's the starter this week and he gets all the reps that he needs and he'll show out a little bit better. But I'm excited to see what Danny Dimes does against the Vikings next week at home. That's a real defense, but knowing us, we'll get carved up because we struggle with rookies. But if he can pass this test this week and then a short week against the Patriots, if you can look good and you don't have to win those games, you just have to look you know, competent. And you'll pass the test and be moving forward as a future quarterback in this league, I think, for years to come. Definitely. So, yeah, it'll be exciting to see what Danny Dimes do. Like I said last week, I want to see him put a string of games together, and he's done that so far. So, um, he got two big tests ahead of him. I don't you know. I'm not expecting him to win them. But if he can show, you know, show something, I'll be happy with it. I agree. All right, let's move to our – Bets, our mystery better X, didn't have a good week. He went one and two. The Jags bailed him out. To be fair, the Patriots did miss an extra point that would have been led to a push for the Bills game, but the Chiefs didn't cover. So we'll get to what he's got this week. We'll, hopefully he can rebound. He's feeling really good about this week. He's got the Browns. Hold on real quick. Oh, what you got? What you got? Uh, so did you do the quick calculations? How much? Oh, we lost money. I know that. We lost money. We lost a lot of money. money. We did not win money. We lost almost all of it. <laughs> we lost everything. We won the Jags bet, right? Yeah, but we didn't have that much on the Jags. We had a lot on the Pats and the Chiefs. The we had a lot the on Chiefs. the Pats for the Chiefs. So what, what do you think? We're in, the, we're in the hole for like... What, I, I think the, we're in the hole... For 900,000, no, right? No, so we won the Jags bet, which was... Four, nine, I think we're in the hole like 700,000. Seven hundred thousand. So we gotta come out. So we only have three hundred thousand to play with because we we have we play with the million. So yeah, we gotta somehow we gotta flip this and get out of the hole a little we bit. Gotta get out of the hole. So with these picks, yeah. All so right. let's let's hear him. He's got the Browns plus three and a half at the Niners as his upset. Uh, I'm not sure I want to put too much on that game. They're getting a lot of points. I'll give it to him. I I'm comfortable putting fifty k on that. We're going to get this whole Pete, man. We only can't get out of the hole with 50K. We're going to throw well, some money down. Well, that's why we save him for his lock and his like. Uh, I mean, he, okay. like, he likes, how about UCF? He likes UCF on Saturday. Minus four and a half against Cincinnati. They're oh, I like that one. You like that one? You want to put a little yeah. more on that? We could throw some more on Yeah, let's, let's hear him on, then we'll judge what we, what we can right. put on it. And his lock of the week, Chicago, minus four against Oakland. Oakland coming off a huge road win. He thinks they let down this week against the Bears. Okay, 
Uh, that's tough because we don't know. Who's, we know Daniel. I mean, Chase Daniels is quarterback. Chase Daniels is playing quarterback. But uh, okay, uh, I feel more comfortable putting the, the money on the plus three than I do the, the Bears game. All right, um, so we can put the Browns plus three. Let's let's do um, let's we'll put one hundred fifty thousand on the Browns plus three. All right, and then you want to put the other hundred. You want to put a hundred k on the UCF and then fifty on the Bears. Yeah, you feel comfortable with that? I'm okay with that. I'm gonna let you take the role with this. This is your money. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, a mystery expert, but not let us. Yeah, down I know he let us down this week, but let us down this week. Uh, maybe your Chiefs let us down. They knew. All right. So, <laughs> and then we go. Probably so. We go to the picks. You killed. You're killing me in the head to head so far. You're eight and two on the two weeks. I'm five and five. So we started off with the two. Baseball Barely games. swimming. Yeah, two baseball games. Uh, let's move to the Thursday night game. Rams at the Seahawks. Who you got? I got the Seahawks. He's I live in Seattle. I can't. I can't go against the Seahawks. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm go. going with the Rams. They own the Seahawks. I know they own the Seahawks. Even when the Rams were bad, they own the Seahawks. I'm going with the. I'm going with the Rams to bounce back on a short week. Saturday, we got Auburn at Florida. I'm picking Auburn. I. I you feel the same way? I feel the same way. Uh, yeah, just yeah. It, uh, Florida, Florida is at home though. Yeah, Florida is at home. It's in the swamp. That's not gonna change my pick, but uh, <laughs> you just wanted to say. Okay, it. that makes it. That makes me think just a, a second longer, not too much though. Yeah, I can see that. And then the last one, big game, Green Bay, Dallas. Both teams looking for a rebound. Games in Dallas. Who are you going with? Dallas burned me last week because I took them, but I'm gonna take them again. I'm a. I can't believe I'm keep. I keep taking Dallas Cowboys. I, feel- I dislike the Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys more than anyone in the world, <laughs> but I do love Zeke and Dak, so I guess I'll take them. I'll take them. I feel the same way. I'm going with the Cowboys. Don't let me down. I picked the Packers and the Cowboys last week. They both let me down, so I'd feel more comfortable picking the Cowboys, but, you know, because screw the Packers. What else is new? All right, so who balled <laughs> out for you this week, dude? Uh Ball of the week is a uh, wide receiver from Alabama, Devontae Smith. This man had 11 catches, 274 yards, and five touchdowns. Yes, five touchdowns. Oh, boy. that's a, I believe that's a school record for a game. That's something yeah, else. 100%. Imagine that's... all the great receivers that have played at Bama. Nobody's had that many touchdowns. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. All also, right. one, I just want to keep this on your radar real quick. Um, Jalen Hurts, Heisman, Heisman watch, because I know you're not, a, you're not about it. I'm not you about it. You don't think it, it can happen, Slink but that's when I want to spit out these shit. I'm, each week, I'm going to give you these stats for you. This week, first Texas Tech, oh. 17 of 24, 415 yards, four touchdowns total. Just keep that in your memory break, okay? Texas Tech's defense put up so much fight, Jalen Hurts had to go get a workout in the weight room after the game because that's how bad they are. So I'm not about it at all. <laughs> hey, you you can't help who's on your schedule. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep talking. All right. My doghouse, Andy Dalton, Kirk Cousins. Primetime games, they're awful. They should be roommates, bunk beds. Nelson Aguilar and the Eagles out of my doghouse. They had a great week in Green Bay. They caught the football. They scored touchdowns. Kirk Cousins, Andy Dalton, permanent residents of my doghouse. They're never coming out unless they win the Super Bowl. That simple. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, they just that's, that's their house, not the, doghouse. No, they just they, live in a doghouse. They now. might as well, you know, get a bed set up, call their wives, tell them that's where they moved. That's where they reside. Get a change of address. Get a new driver's license. They live there for now. All right. Wow. Yep. All well, right, Pete. You got. I got. Let's end this with a scenario for you. I got all a right. Little, little throwing scenario the for scenario him. at me. What you got? So put your put your coach P hat on. Coach um, Pete's on. I'm ready. Your your team's up one, with the your defense on the field. So the post team on their twenty. On oh no, your twenty. On my twenty. With one. I mean, we have, you're 20 with one minute left, and you have one timeout. Do you let them score, or do you try to make them kick a field goal? Uh, how much time did you say left? One minute. One minute. With one timeout. With one timeout, and they're in your 20, do you let them score or try and let them kick the field goal? Mm. You know, my I want to say let them score, but – if they're smart, they're not gonna let me. They're not gonna score. They're gonna run for a first down and take a knee and kick the field goal with no time left. So but you can do one of those old like you know don't like just like let them score. You gonna like, go yeah. up to them and play and then like almost kind of push them in the end zone essentially. Or, or, like, <laughs> yeah, you know carry let, let the them guy, think they're carry gonna carry them like, into tackled. the end zone. 
Yep. Yeah. The 20 yard line is kind of far. I like it. In my my gut instinct is to let them score the touchdown and let my offense back out there. It's not going to hurt. They're going to go for two to try and make it a seven point game, get the stop on the two, and then we go down and get a touchdown, win the football game. That would be my. Do- that's what I would do. The Brown, I mean the Broncos in that situation this this week, and they, uh, I mean obviously they just tried to stop them, hope but, they miss the field goal. But those odds are, I mean you never know. I guess with a field goal kicker, they you picked get the in their wrong head. kicker. Hey, they picked the wrong kicker. Josh Lambeau, the most accurate kicker. Yeah, in the you can't mess with those the A and M kickers since yeah, uh, got... since he moved teams from the Chargers. He now can kick. Funny. Yeah. So. Uh yeah, this little scenario. Maybe I'll try to give you one each week and see what uh, you can do with it. I, I like uh, it. All right, so I think that'll do it for this week. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoy our content. And we will see you oh, all next week. Oh yeah, we're on we're on Apple Podcasts now. Oh, 